This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone. And welcome back to our Standing Watch program. How divided is the EU? Who is against whom? And how may this relate to the fulfillment of biblical prophecy in our times? Now, Politico wrote the following on June 25, addressing a growing controversy between Eastern European states and Western European states. The magazine said, Leaders from around the EU confronted Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Odovan over the anti-LGBT measures in an extraordinary clash, reflecting rising tension over the bloc's core values. Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte suggested Odovan should leave the EU, while Luxembourg's Xavier Bettel spoke of his own struggles to be accepted as a gay man. The controversy erupted after the Hungarian parliament passed legal amendments to ban the promotion and portrayal of homosexuality or sexual changes to minors. Odovan received support from Poland, and to some extent also from Slovenia, while a few countries such as Slovakia did not take a clear position. Over half of the EU's member nations signed a declaration condemning Hungary's legislation. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, who is of course German, called it a shame. Now Express added on July 3 that 17 EU countries have requested that Hungary be brought before the European Court of Justice because of the law. Now then we have the Czech Republic. The Daily Caller wrote on June 28. Czech President Milos Seman expressed his support for the recent Hungarian legislation that banned gay and transgender content for minors. And what about Slovenia? Express wrote on July 3. Slovenia's increasingly strained relations with Brussels will undoubtedly be underscored for the next six months, as Prime Minister Jansa prepares to be a thorn in Brussels' side during his presidency of the EU. The Slovenian leader has been in charge of the rotating EU presidency for just three days. Now, this was written, of course, July the 3rd. And he already lashed out at the EU's treatment of Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Odovan. Mr. Jansa said on Friday that the Hungarian leader must be allowed to express his ideas about the European Union's future, warning that the bloc would continue to shrink if people are excluded from the debate. His comments were a further sign of a growing alliance between the nationalist leaders of Slovenia, Hungary, and Poland, and you might want to add the Czech Republic, that is worrying more liberal countries in the EU. French President Emmanuel Macron spoke of a fundamental East-West divide. In Western capitals, the increasingly assertive coalition of Eastern leaders is being watched with concern. Some academics believe an Eastern European Union is emerging. Now this is interesting development, because according to the Bible, according to biblical prophecies, there will ultimately be ten nations or groups of nations developing from the current EU, which has currently, I mean, 27 member states. So it's going to be 10 nations or groups of nations. They are referred to in the Bible as the 10 toes or the 10 kings or the 10 horns, and they will be united, but not entirely so. In the book of Daniel, Daniel is explaining the meaning of a dream, which the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar had. And we read about this in Daniel chapter 2, beginning in verse 41. 
Whereas you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, yet the strength of the iron shall be in it, just as you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay. Verse 42 says, And as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. Verse 43, As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. And then verse 44, And in the days of these kings, these ten nations, groups of nations, developing in Europe, in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Now we do not know for sure who these ten kings or ten nations will be, but it is a safe assumption that in the West, they would include nations such as Germany, Austria, Italy, Spain, and in the East, countries like Poland and Hungary, perhaps the Czech Republic, might be included as well. Perhaps five Western nations, five Eastern nations, as you have ten toes, five toes on the one leg, other five toes on the other. Now, Revelation 17 gives us further information insofar as those ten kings, as these ten nations, these ten horns, are concerned. We read in Revelation chapter 17 and verse 12. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings, who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour, a very short time, as kings with the beast, this charismatic, political, economic, military leader. But notice what it said. Those ten kings will receive authority together with the beast at the same time. It goes on to say in verse 13, These are of one mind, and they will give the power and authority to the beast. They are of one mind when it comes to giving the authority to the beast. We have already read in the book of Daniel, they are not completely of one mind when it comes to other matters, perhaps core values. But they are also of one mind when it comes to what the next verse is saying in verse 14. These will make war with the Lamb. And the Lamb will overcome them, for he is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. And that is when Jesus Christ returns to make an end to the misrule of man. So the development in Europe right now regarding the laws for and against homosexuality, that development is also interesting because there are indications in the Bible, that that beast, that last final leader arising in Europe, may be gay. And of course, if that's the case, we can see controversy developing between certain European nations, pro and con. But they still will give their power and their authority to that beast, to that leader. Now, how this all may come about is described in our free booklet, The Ten European Revivals of the Ancient Roman Empire. Please ask for a free copy. And until next time, this is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God. P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.